Welcome to Saturday Primetime, presented by DirecTV. And welcome back to Sold Out and Rocking Assembly Hall. Here at Bloomington, Indiana, the Indiana Hoosiers and the Michigan Wolverines in arguably the biggest game of the college basketball season to date. Let's go to the public address announcer now, Chuck Crabb, with the starting lineups. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Indiana University welcomes you to the Assembly Hall. Here are your starters. For Michigan, at a guard, a six-foot sophomore from Columbus, Ohio. Number three, Trey Burns. At a guard, a six-six junior from Miami, Florida. Number 10, Tim Hardaway. At guard, a 6'6 freshman from Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. Number 11, Nick Salskis. At forward, a 6'6 freshman from St. John, Indiana. Number 1, Glenn Robinson III. And at forward, a 6'10 sophomore from Grand Ledge, Michigan. Number 15, John Horford. The head coach of the University of Michigan in his sixth season, John Beeline. The Indiana lineup coming in a moment, but first, let's revisit the two times that the Indiana Hoosiers have defeated a number one ranked team in this building. Down to six, covered into the left wing. He finds Hornsby, top of the key, right side to Haston, one dribble. He throws it up, and it is good! It's good! We won! It's in a win! Woo! And they pile on top of Kirk Haston! And here come students now piling on top of the pile as well. Two point lead, no timeouts for Indiana. Jones. Watford for the win! Yes! Yes! Oh! oh. Unbelievable! Unbelievable! Can't believe it! Uh, definitely you've seen Indiana fans will never forget the win over Kentucky last season, December 2011. Can they knock off another number one team here tonight? Number three, Indiana. Number one, Michigan with the starting lineup of the Hoosiers coming up now. Hoosiers of Indiana, at a guard, a six-foot graduate student from Bloomington, Indiana, number one, Jordan Hall. At guard, a six-five junior from Upper Marlboro, Maryland, number four, Victor Oladipo. Guard, a six-foot freshman from Indianapolis, Indiana. Number 11, Kevin Yogi Perry. At forward, a 6'9 senior from Birmingham, Alabama. Number two, Christian Watford. At forward, a seven-foot sophomore from Washington, Indiana. Number 40, Cody Zeller. The head coach of the Indiana Hoosiers, of course, is Tom Crean, who has brought this program back year by year, win by win. Went to the Sweet 16 last year, ranked number one earlier this season. And they would get back to number one if they could beat Michigan here tonight at Assembly Hall. For more, let's go to Shannon Spade. Well, Dan, I asked Michigan's Trey Burke what it meant to him to be number one in the country. He told me he knows it's an accomplishment because it validates all of their hard work, but he quickly reminded me 
that they don't hang banners for the number one team in February. Tonight's game is not about backing up their ranking. Tonight's game is about taking one step closer to a Big Ten championship. Now, Burke told me last season in the loss to Indiana, he let the emotions of the game get the best of him. He said tonight the key word is poise. He knows he leads this team. When he slows down, they make less mistakes and they have more success. Dan? All right, Shannon, thank you very much. Such a storied rivalry. They go back so many years. You've done so many big Michigan-Indiana games over the years, but this one's right up at the top. Well, it's going to be really, I think, a classic. But remember this. I don't want to get all the Michigan fans a little nervous, but they have lost here 14 in the last 15 times on this floor. The one time they beat them, it was when Indiana, could you believe this, only a couple years ago, was 1-17 in this conference. This is back to the old Bobby Knight days. The spirit, the enthusiasm, the passion. Two legitimate national championship contenders here in Michigan and Indiana. The first time ever they have met as top three. Each of them are the top three. They've met once before as top five. Indiana won that one 20 years ago. And Jalen Rose, our guy, was in Michigan. Wolverine. And such a team that found five. That place is electric. I think matchups are going to be big, man. The matchups. Who will stay and play in front of Burke? Mike Sanzier, Ted Valentine, and my deeds are officials. And we are ready for a big one here in Bloomington. And the ball in the hands of arguably the most outstanding point guard in the nation in Trey Burke. Ty's got a diaper dandy on him right now. Yogi Ferrell came in with a big reputation as a defensive player. And this was one of the things people were wondering about. Who would Victor Oladipo be on? He starts on Tim Hardaway Jr. Stauskas misses a couple of attempts and Zeller with the rebound. I'm not surprised at the matchup of Oladipo on Hardaway. Matchup size-wise, quickness-wise. Hulls nearly turns it over. They smother him, and a foul is called on John Horford. Horford getting the start for the injured Jordan Morgan, who's out with a sprained ankle, may play in a pinch tonight, but Horford and Mitch McGarry will get the bulk of the minutes at the five spot. I'll tell you, Morgan, very important player. Very important player, very physical. And how about this, 33 seconds in after the foul on Horford, Mitch McGarry, a freshman out of Chesterton, Indiana, that's up in the northern part of the state. He's in already for Horford. He brings in a little physicality. And another foul going against Michigan as they get the ball inside to Zeller. And this one is going on Burke, I believe. First foul on Trey Burke. You know, I was telling Jenny Billis before the game, I think we're going to see a big game out of Zeller. I think he likes the big stage. I think he's going to get the ball early. They're going to go to him. I think that's the advantage that Indiana has. Playing at home and having Zeller in the middle. The sophomore averaging about 16 points and 8 rebounds per game, shooting 58% from the field, shooting 74% from the line. Came back real strong against Purdue after having two subpar games. Mm -hmm. He was 2 for 11, even though in the last two minutes against Michigan State, he was vital. He blocked the shot, took a charge, and he made a 30-foot drive to the goal with the left hand. How about that win Wednesday up at West Lafayette? 97 to 60, the Hoosiers over Purdue. I think it's the worst beating they've ever taken up at West Lafayette. Burke can't get the shot off. Still plenty of time. McGarry the drive, and Zeller got him. Back to Burke for three. There's no doubt in my mind, he is the premier point guard in the nation. He can score, he can absolutely penetrate. These are two outstanding offensive teams, and we're seeing early evidence of that. Victor Oladipo shooting better than 50% from three-point range on the season. Talk about improvement. He shot about 25% last yep. year. He's a workaholic, has a great attitude. He has made himself this incredible player. He doesn't take a ton of them, but he's 19 for 35 from three-point range on the year. You know, Dan, what's amazing? They got four guys shooting better than 40% yep. from the three. Burke again, a little bit strong. Zeller down with the rebound, and Hulls couldn't handle it. 
And it's out of bounds back to Michigan. You know, there were big win over Michigan State. They did a great job controlling Appley. He played only 19 minutes, got a foul trouble, but he had like four points. The bottom line is he's been averaging about 16 a game, and Yogi Ferrell played him a great portion of those 19 minutes. Keep an eye on the matchup, too, with Hardaway being defended by Oladipo. Oladipo considered one of the premier defenders in all of college basketball, and Tim Hardaway Jr. is having a terrific year in many respects. Burke from the corner knocks it down. They got to find him a little quicker. Can't allow him to get off into that rhythm. He gets in that groove, man. He can be really dynamite. Averaging better than 17 and 7. The last Big Ten player to do that. Oh. Ma Magic Johnson back in 1979. One of my most favorite players. Yogi Ferrell's been hot from beyond the arc lately. That makes him 8 for his last 14 from three-point range. He started the season really slow shooting the basketball. Showing why he was one of the premier point guards in America. that everybody wanted, but he was a lot for Indiana. Well, Farrell trying to keep Burke as close to him as possible, not wanting to give him an inch of space. Stauskas with a drive. Zeller got a piece, and here comes Oladipo. Three on two. He can fly, man. He can fly. A oh, great ball movement. Farrell for three. Tremendous ball movement. Reversing the ball. That was clinic, man. That was a clinic. I think both Harbaugh's jump up in that room in the world. <laughs> I know you're listening, John, and watching. So is Jim. Don't tell John they're picking Jim to win the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> what a start for Yogi Ferrell with a couple of threes. Indiana, an outstanding perimeter shooting team, and they're up six early. Burke inside, McGarry slams it home. What a terrific pass. What a terrific pass. He has to be in the argument as national player of the year, Trey Burke. And McGarry hustling back on D. Zeller runs the floor so well. Ola Depot with a tough layup. You talk about MVPs, most outstanding players, even though when you look at Indiana, if I had my choice, the one player, if I was starting a team, you want to start with a seven-footer like Zella, but if you say the most valuable this year, mm -hmm. it's been Oladipo. He's been absolutely sensational. Burke driving on Hull, scoops it up, no good, and another rebound for Zella. Hulls will have a tough time staying in front of him. Too quick. You look at both. Watford for three. They got all kinds of three-point shooters. They got all kinds of three-point shooters. They lead the nation in scoring, baby. Hoosier mania is back. Hoosier hysteria is back. Now we're gonna get the general back. He's gonna come here. Stauskas. 50% from beyond the arc on the season. He can't find the range. The only game he really struggled in was Michigan's only loss, the game at Ohio State. Zeller inside. He's going to have a big day. He's very versatile. Oh, they're fired up. Victor's touching the floor. They're running over. Look at this. They're fired up. How sharp is your business security? Can it help protect your people and property while keeping out threats to your operations? It's not working. <gasps> yes, it is. Welcome to Tyco Integrated Security. With world-class monitoring centers and thousands of qualified technicians, we've got a personal passion to help your business run safer, smarter, and sharper. We are Tyco Integrated Security, and we are sharper. What a start for the Indiana Hoosiers. This game is a part of ESPN's journey to the tourney as we welcome you back to Assembly Hall. Indiana is perfect from the field. They are six for six from the field. They are four for four from three-point range. They are two for two from the line. And they've got an 18 to seven lead already on Michigan. And Tom Green wishing the game was over right now. He can get the bus, he can get on the plane, and fly out to New Orleans. Trey Burke out of the game, probably briefly. The under 16 immediate timeout is coming on the next whistle. Spike Albrecht is into the game number two, and we've got a held ball. And it'll be Indiana ball when we come back. Everything Indiana tonight so far. What a start for the Hoosiers. John Beeline trying to settle them down here in Bloomington. 
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Direct TV. Don't just watch TV, Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV and in part by Infinity. Luxury cars that deliver inspired performance and Chase Freedom. Get your cash back. Go to chase.com slash freedom and activate bonus cash back today. I hate that cable only lets us record two shows at once. Me too. Cable's worse than... <laughs> Not being able to record all our shows at once is more annoying than... <laughs> we need to upgrade to DirecTV and get the new Genie. She lets you record five shows at once. I want DirecTV more than... <laughs> Record five shows at once with the new Direct TV Genie. Call 1 800 Direct TV. I really should have followed the GPS. I'll just ask this guy. Excuse me, sir! Do you know where Christine is? The Infinity G sedan. Because luxury should inspire confidence. It's not from around here. No matter what road you take. Right now, you can lease an Infinity G sedan for only $2.99 a month for 24 months. Infinity Inspired Performance. Use Chase Freedom at gas stations this quarter. Get 5% cash back. Well, everybody get, everybody get. Activate your 5% cash back at chase.com slash freedom. Red Lobster 30 Shrimp. Wow, that's a lot of shrimp. It's Red Lobster's 30 Shrimp. For $11.99, pair any two shrimp selections on one plate, like mango jalapeno shrimp and Parmesan crunch shrimp. Just $11.99. Offer ends soon. I'm Ryan Stewart, and I see food differently. Sunday, ESPN has the ultimate countdown to Super Bowl 47. What a start for the Hoosiers, and what a scene here at Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana. The Hoosiers leading the Wolverines by 11 early and dealing with as noisy a building as she'll ever be, and she's used to it from NASCAR, I guess. Here's Shannon Spade. It's not too, actually it is pretty bad, but you gotta <laughs> love the atmosphere here, Dan. And when you talk about home court advantage, Indiana has got to be at the top of the list, and of course it's because of this place. Over 17 and a half thousand fans, they've been sold out every game this season, and they pack them in here. Hundreds of feet up into the air, every square inch. Not the best seats in the house, but they certainly see those three-point shots being made. And while some fans seem very far away, others are literally right on top of the players down here on the bench. You can feel them breathing on them. Cody Zeller said this place has so much adrenaline, it's not hard to play well here. You know, Shannon, just like Dana O'Neill, she wrote a great article, a phenomenal article on ESPN.com about the past in Indiana, just like Kentucky. They have such a love for hoops. Well, the deep on the kick, Farrell, and the first miss of the game of the offensive rebound and put back for Watford. I tell you, when Watford plays well, it just elevates the whole team. When he gives them the kind of play, he's a little inconsistent. Burke still on the bench. Albrecht, one of the five freshmen in the Michigan rotation, still out there right now. And in fact, at this moment, there are four freshmen on the floor for Michigan. They play on, and Hardaway knocks it down with a foot on the line. It's a long two. They need some more fence out of Hardaway. He has struggled against Indiana. Last year, he was 11 for 33, 2 for 15, shooting the three. Offensive foul, Yogi Farrell, Trey Burke getting ready to check back in. Albrecht will sit down. People forget how young this Michigan team is, that they have two, three, sometimes four freshmen in the game, and yet they come in as the number one ranked team in the well, nation. Well, that's because this guy can flat out coach. John Beeline has done a terrific job. They've renovated that place. David Brandon, the AD and them. I can't wait to get their juice there for Mike Tirico. They have another day with a fair team. Ohio Not State. Bad. Then after that, they're at Wisconsin. After that, Michigan State. Tough league, huh? Wow. Remy Abel into the game for Indiana. Yogi Farrell has gone to the bench. Burke trying to turn the corner. If Stauskas makes shots, that's a huge factor for Michigan tonight. Absolutely, Dan. they got to get him free for some threes. Yep. Hardaway over Oladipo. What a tough shot. That's a big-time play right there by Hardaway. As many of you know, he's the son of Tim Hardaway. Abel wide open misses the three. Michigan catches a break as Zeller goes hurtling over Burke. 
And nearly turned over. Burke gets it back. Pull up in the lane. Short. Zelle the rebound. You know, you mentioned turnovers. Michigan only turns the ball over 9.8 per game. That's unbelievable. Up to 10. How about a Wednesday against Northwestern? They turned it over twice. Wow. Zeller left hand. How does he go two for 11 in two games with that skill set and that size, quickness? He's a big time player, man. He's a big time player. I agree with Jay. He is so important to them. Take him out of the lineup and they really suffer in terms of being an elite team. McGarry the screen looking back door for Burt. Now Glenn Robinson the third. Driving, scoops it up with a lot of English, but can't get the roll. He's got to put points on. He's been really sensational for a freshman. Look at that move by Ola. Deep oh, that's a big time. Oh, are you kidding me? That's a little mini version of a kid that played in North Carolina. That's a mini version of number 23. Are you serious? Are you serious? Hardaway rejected by Zeller. I think Zeller wants to climb the charts a little bit. He's dropped a little bit in terms of some of the NBA ratings. I think maybe after tonight he's going to go up. Look at old Depot. I mean, that's a Michael move. That's a Michael move and a Michael Chan. Oh, he's big time. He has as much speed and athleticism as any player in the country. Jordan Morgan, bad ankle and all, into the game for Michigan. That's him with the ball, number 52. He's also checking in, sorry, to Karis Levert, a freshman out of Pickle. To Ohio. You know, Morgan's a solid defensive player with a big body, and they're going to need him, I really believe, inside to try and neutralize Zeller. Zone look, Indiana. Levert misses the three. Zeller is all over the glass in the early going. Here's Will Sheehy, sixth man for Indiana, number zero. He could be a game changer with his energy. Levert knocks it away. Two Hoosiers collide. We've got a held ball, and it will belong to Michigan when we come back. Victor Oladipo, Dick, raising the roof on this building with that last drive. He's an elevator man, man. Up, up, and away. A little jam city, baby. Get the celebration here. The miraculous is everywhere, in our homes, our minds. We can share every second in data dressed as pixels. A billion roaming photojournalists uploading the human experience, and it is spectacular. So why would you cap that? My iPhone 5 can see every point of view, every panorama, the entire gallery of humanity. I need to upload all of me. I need, no, I have the right to be unlimited. Only Sprint offers truly unlimited data for iPhone 5. The Capital One Cup congratulates the best of the best in college sports. Congratulations to all the NCAA Division I Fall National Champions. These student athletes have laid it all on the line to bring honor and glory to their schools by winning valuable points towards the Capital One Cup. Follow your school and check the standings at CapitalOneCup.com to see who will win the Capital One Cup and be the best in college sports. Last year, you threw an interception because you read man coverage, but the defense was playing zone. You probably should have double-checked the free safety and dumped it off to the tight end. Is that a question? Just an observation. It pays to double-check with State Farm. It's a whole new February at Subway. Enjoy favorites like the Italian BMT as $5 footlongs and hearty subs like the chicken and bacon ranch melt as $6 footlong specials. Subway. Eat fresh. Proud of this week, the last time the Michigan Wolverines were ranked number one was back in 1993 with the Fab Five. And what a two-year run, really, they had in 92 and 93, making the national championship game. In both of those years, Juwan Howard, Jimmy King, Ray Jackson, Chris Weber, and our guy, number five, Jalen Rose, who is here in the house tonight. They really, I mean, they changed basketball. It was the first time that we saw that a team oh. comprised entirely freshmen could be that good. What was going on back then? Trey Burke was a baby. For the last time that Michigan was number one, John Beeline was three jobs ago. His first job at Division One that was at Canisius. The uh, wow. president, the first lady, had just been married. 
And the number one song from one of your favorites, I know. She was phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal. Lost her life too early. Just a great talent. Hey, there's Jill. Look there's at the Jill. Right there. Let's check in again with Shannon. Well, guys, I just stuck my head into the Michigan huddle. Coach Beeline just trying to get his guys calmed down. He told them the clock is our friend and looked just at Trey Burke and said, just play ball. And that's John Beeline's personality. He's not going to get stressed out. He's not going to stress his players out. He's going to try to calm them down and just have them believe in themselves. Hardaway, nice look. Morgan, good D by Zeller. Good post defense. You're right by Zeller. He had an opportunity and he closed them off. Back into the hands of Burke. Oh, they play so hard. That's one thing Matt Painter said. He loved Indiana because they play so hard and they're so unselfish. Indiana switching defenses. Open look. Hardaway. And the rebound down to Hose. Five on four as Morgan hit the deck. Oh, great look inside. No one runs the court better than Zeller for a big player. He gets up and down the floor. Remember the Carolina game? He was running yep. up and down for layups. Just like his brother Tyler. You've got to tag him on the way back. And when Morgan went down chasing the rebound, Zeller was all alone. Levert off the glass and good. Big basket to at least temporarily quiet the crowd. Sheehy for Zeller. Well, the turnover there, but as you said, the ball movement that Indiana has shown tonight has been spectacular. Well, that's Hulls right now. Great look, gets the good angle. Zeller has the ability to utilize either the left or right hand and converts inside. Zeller's going to get a breather. John Horford is back into the game now in the middle as Hull sits down as well. John Horford checks back in. John Beeline is, all, is rotating his three big guys liberally here in the first half. Got to try and stay in front of Burke. You can't allow him to beat you off the bounce. That's why they came short against Ohio State. Kraft and Lenzo Smith, Shannon Scott, I think are the best defensive perimeter players as a, as a threesome in America. Yogi Farrell called for the foul. That is his second. And Tom Crean's going to make a substitution. He's going to bring Remy Abel back into the game with Hulls getting a rest right now and two fouls on Farrell. They're two purest ball handlers and point guards really are on the bench right now so Abel is going to be the primary ball handler with this lineup on the floor. I got a feeling we're going to see a little run by Michigan. And too much pride, too much ability, they're too well coached. I think you're going to see they can interesting. They're going to get a little better execution offensively. Bird, tough one. That was a tough shot there, a bad angle. Good way to get the ball up the floor. I can't believe how good he has become. I cannot believe it. I know he's improved looking at his numbers. You prepare for the game. But you win this year. What can he not do? He can run the court. He's got great elevation. He's got athleticism. He can shoot the ball. And we know he flat out can defend as well as anybody in America. That is a big time PTP. A prime time performer. <laughs> he's going to ask you to be his publicist. And everything you said is exactly true. He's I want to be his agent. <laughs> Forget publicist. I want his agent. Missed the free throw and the rebound down to Levert. Levert's really been a surprise for them. They thought we're going to red show right. this year. And then John Beeline liked him so much in practice, they said, hey, we need you. Never mind that red shirt. Look at she how he stays in front of him. Fighting over the top of screen. And look at them converge. Horford comes up with it, hits Robinson. Hollowell with a rejection from behind. What a great defensive sequence by the Hoosiers. Great hustle right there. Hustle, recovery, help. You name it. Right here, look at this. He tries to give a nice little pass for Morgan. And there's the defense by Hollowell. Comes from the offside. McGarry and Stauskas back in for Horford and Levert as John Beeline keeps trying to find a combination that will click. But right now, Indiana, just their effort and intensity has been off the charts in the first 10 minutes. You know, Michigan can't get any open looks. Tough for, one, but Hardaway gets it to go. He's keeping them in it right now. They can't get any open looks for Staskis, and he's one of the premier three-point shooters in America. Hulse has done a great job staying in front of him. Remember, oh, and there it is. Strip. They take advantage of Abel as Burke jams it. Just about to say, Hull's getting a rest. Farrell with a couple of fouls. This is not the normal alignment for Indiana, and Burke picked the pocket of Abel. Good double team right there. You don't have to pick up your dribble in that sequence. Good ball reversal. 
Hollowell with the baseline drive. And it's a charge. That was a good Called call. Hold on, Hollowell. That was an excellent call right there by Mike Eads. Definitely charged on that baseline. Yep. Tim Hardaway Jute to take the charge. And he's there. Yes, sir. He's yep. established. Hey, last time Michigan came here and beat a ranked Indiana team was in 1986. And the coach is in the house on radio. Bill Freeman, quarterback of Michigan that year, was a guy named Jim Harbaugh. Think that's an omen for the 49ers tomorrow? <laughs> I got the 49ers 24-21. I'm sorry, John. I love you. But I got to give the edge to Jim. I love their toughness defensively. Tom Crean going down to the Super Bowl to see his brothers-in-law, the coaches Harbaugh. He better go with his wife, John. Okay. Hardaway around and out, walk for the rebound. Walk for such a key for this team if they're going to win the national title. It is so wide open this year in college basketball. A lot of good teams, not really a dominant team. Sheehy. And a hold inside. Going against Indiana, it is on Derek Elston. Well, we got more basketball coming your way tomorrow afternoon, the Sunday afternoon showcase of Big East matchup as Marquette takes on Louisville at 2 Eastern, live on ESPN and watch ESPN. And Mr. Phyllis and I will be making the short drive from Bloomington to Louisville to get a little afternoon basketball for you before you settle in for the Super Bowl. We a little bonus, you and Jay, huh? We a bonus time. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Should be a good one. Should be a real good game. Marquette's done a great yeah. job. Two more great coaches, a couple of teams who play awfully hard. Should be fun. That guy should be in the Hall of Fame, Rick Pitino. Now Hulls is back into the game, but all the on yes, Burke sir. right now. Hulls on Stauskas. That doesn't yeah. surprise me. There's the strip. Is he something else? He, he's called for the travel, but is he something else on D? And look at the show of respect between Burke and Oladipo at the end of that play. You know, Burke's going to like this challenge defensively, but I'm going to tell you right now, you look at Oladipo, he has length. He's got the great wingspan. He stays in front of you, works so hard defensively. A sensational start tonight for the Indiana Hoosiers. Zeller inside, Oladipo, Farrell knocking down threes. Indiana up 11. If I don't bring home that box of chocolates, get used to sleeping in the doghouse. We're talking trouble. Big trouble. No love. I gotta give her chocolate. It's Valentine's Day. Don't give her just any chocolates. Give her Russell Stover chocolates with the famous Russell Stover bow. ESPN is proud to welcome the Mexican national team and all El Tri fans on their journey to Brazil 2014. Wednesday, Chicharito leads Mexico as they kick off the final leg of World Cup qualifiers against Jamaica. El Tri on ESPN, Mexico versus Jamaica, Wednesday at 9.30 on ESPN2. It's leadership celebration time at Town & Country Ford, your Super Ford store. New 2013 Ford Fiesta SE, 195 per month. New 2013 Ford Focus SE, 209 per month. Your Super Ford store, Town & Country Ford. New 2013 Ford Edge SE, 309 per month. Your Super Ford store, town and country Ford. Oh.
1993, Indiana's Calbert Chaney received the Wooden Award after leading Indiana to a 31-4 record and the Big Ten title. To this day, Chaney is the leading scorer in Indiana and Big Ten history. What a talent he was now, the director of basketball operations for the Hoosiers. You know, he played on the last team to win outright the Big Ten title here in 1993. Also, I did the game against the Fab Five. It was an unbelievable game. Came to the last shot, and it was a block shot by Alan Henderson and Chris Webber. That was the end of the game. It was an incredible matchup. And the Fab Five, we will never, ever see five freshmen that can get to the final game like they did. I thought it was an amazing achievement. Stauskas still looking for his first one. He's 0 for 5. They're going to need his three. Hulls passed up a shot. Now launches one over Burke. And McGarry down for the rebound. Michigan looking to run. They do this well. Burke with a layup. Tremendous transition right there by Michigan. They got up and down the floor really quick. The last time they lost, the only time, was the Ohio State. Yep. Stos Stoskis did not score a point in that game. John Beelines talked about the hostile environment in Columbus. This is probably yet to another level here in the Bloomington. And again, it's a young team, and he feels there is a learning curve in playing in these kinds of environments. Offensive foul in the post. Watford. Well, one thing that John Beeline would love to be able to do is to have his team get out and run a little bit, and they did here. Nice outlet by McGarry. One baby run. There's the pitch out. There's the one pass. And there's the guy that can finalize. Tremendous job of getting the ball out quickly and getting numbers. So, Indiana started with all the deep. Now he's on Burke. Maurice Creek is into the game. He wears number 22, was number three. Evidently has switched his numbers. He is now guarding Hardaway. So with Farrell on the bench, and they don't have the two small guards, they can afford to put Oladipo on Burke, but Michigan converts again, and they're getting back into this game. Nice little two-man play, flipping the ball up on top to McGarry. There's Burke on Hulse. Hulse has not been able to get free. He and Stoskis have not been able to knock down one of the patented threes. Watford, better than 40% shooter from beyond the arc as Hulse just about traveled. And away from the ball, we've got a foul on McGarry of Michigan. He can be physical. Difference with the he and when you talk about Horford, Horford's a little bit more finesse. This kid is very physical. He's tough. First on McGarry. Howells got a screen, couldn't get the shot off in the corner though. Whips a pass to Oladipo. And McGarry down with another rebound. He's giving Michigan good minutes. Yeah, good productive minutes. We saw that in the Minnesota game yeah. as well on the road. Burke trying to split three defenders, turns it over. Not a good job right there by Burke. Too much one-dimensional. Got to pass the ball a little bit and get it back. Zeller couldn't handle that bullet pass from Watford. ESPN's got a Super Tuesday doubleheader for you. It begins at 7 Eastern when the Florida Gators, who are just rampaging their way through the SEC this year, they will take on Arkansas. And then what a game you'll be at it. You mentioned it already. Ohio State and Michigan up in Ann Arbor at 9 Eastern. Super Tuesday on ESPN and also live on Watch ESPN. I can't wait to get up to Chrysler. I've not seen it since they renovated it. And they tell me, Mike Tirico told me, it is absolutely beautiful. Sheehy on Burke right now. He's seeing a variety of different defenders. And it'll stay with Michigan 20 on the shot clock. That's a sign of great respect. When they respect you, they rotate different bodies on you, try to never allow you to get into a rhythm offensively. Tom Crean, meanwhile, has brought Yogi Farrell back into the game. He's playing with two fouls. And wide open underneath, Burke hits Horford. Michigan's back within five, and they're on a 10-0 run. Excuse me, Dan. There was a guy that said I smell a little <laughs> bit of a run out of Michigan. And that guy's sitting right beside me. Uh-oh. Holes for three. Uh -oh. Can't let that guy spot up and shoot the three. You cannot. Jalen Rose just dropped in his seat. He dropped in his seat. I love Jalen. Hulls 48% this year, 45% career from beyond the yard. That's amazing. Think about that number. Yep. Think about that number. Burke draws a double team. Hardaway's wide open. Gotta make that shot. Burke did a great job creating the opportunity with the little penetration. 
Out of bounds, Indiana ball. At times, I think Indiana gets away from getting the ball into the post, getting it to Zeller down in the interior. Tom Green, you talk about working that sideline. What compliments Dwayne Wade? I heard an interview about playing for Tom Green, what it meant mm -hmm. for his career, and where he's gone to be one of the greats to play in the NBA. Coach Wade, of course, uh, at Marquette. The final four year back in 2003. Had one of the great performances made against Kentucky, a tre tremendous Kentucky team. Watford posting up over Robinson. Rejection by Horford. Boy, what a sequence that was. Tremendous defensive play by Horford. Stauskas. This time it goes. That's his shot. Top of the circle. Square his shoulders. Square his body. And I think the uh, Mike Eads is saying they're going to take a look at the next break at the under four timeout, I believe, to see if that is a two or a three. They have scored it as a two right now. But very close with the left foot there, and I believe they will review that at the next media timeout. That's a, that's a big tail rule. That's a big yes. tail rule. Zeller. Hollowell stays with it, and the freshman from Indianapolis lays it in. Hollowell gets the deuce, but it was the look, the vision of Zeller on that baseline, making that baseline pass. Robinson's really been quiet. They got to get him involved a little bit more offensively. He's had some good games recently. Burke with Sheehy on him. Spins, finds Horford. Okay. Still loose. Oh, both teams playing so hard, man. Playing so hard. And it is going to be Michigan ball when we come back. Indiana leading by eight late in the first half. DVR's full again. Oh, you're kidding. Kibble's more irritating than... <laughs> I know. Cable makes me angrier than... We need to upgrade to DirecTV and get the new Genie. She gives you three times more storage than cable. You're right. DirecTV is more amazing than... Get three times more HD recording capacity with a new DirecTV Genie. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. 675,000 hours. That's all the time most of us get. And each day I was spending eight of mine at a desk, making someone else's dream come true. As a tour guide, I still sit all day. Only now, I get somewhere. Don't let your dream job become work. From websites to printing to marketing, at Deluxe, our expertise is at your command. The Capital One Cup congratulates the best of the best in college sports. Congratulations to all the NCAA Division I full national champions. These student athletes have laid it all on the line to bring honor and glory to their schools by winning valuable points towards the Capital One Cup. Follow your school and check the standings at CapitalOneCup.com to see who will win the Capital One Cup and be the best in college sports. The ESPNU National Signing Day Special. The 2013 college football season starts now. Find out where the top recruits in the nation will be making plays. We kick it off with number one ranked Robert Kemdichie's live announcement. And our experts have you covered all day, coast to coast. Somebody's going to get a phenomenal athlete this year. The ESPNU National Signing Day Special. Coverage begins Wednesday at 7.30 a.m. Eastern on ESPNU. Chris Cotter in our ESPN College Basketball Studio has got a good one going on over on ESPN2 from the Hilton Coliseum in Ames. Will Clyburn, three of his 24 points in Iowa State, has a four-point lead over Baylor right now as we speak. A couple of games familiar on in the day. Oklahoma State beat Kansas at Fog Al, and that's not easy to do. And Pittsburgh with the home win over the Cues. Back to Dan and Dick in Bloomington. 
All right, Chris, thank you. What a day in college basketball. Of course, the Kansas loss, the Syracuse loss. So the, the top ten is going to have a different look to it again next week. Also dependent on the outcome of this game. They kept that as a two. The officials looked at it and gave Stauskas a two. How's Michigan only down by eight with Indiana shooting 65% in this game? Unbelievable. Well, they kept battling, battling, and certainly Burke made some big plays. But, you know, you look at the Big Ten. As we said earlier, it doesn't get easier. Michigan has Ohio State. Then they got to go to Wisconsin. And then they have Michigan State. On the other side, you look at Indiana, they're at Illinois, and they're at Ohio State. And let me tell you, I don't care where you go, and you travel, and go to play at Illinois, and certainly with the Buckeyes, those are tough battles. Hollowell, not this time. Indiana also has road games later on at Michigan State, Minnesota, and Michigan. What a killer schedule in the Big Ten this year. Stauskas misses the three. He had a wide open three, but he hesitated. He was thinking too much. Oh, what a great look right there by Phil. Tremendous defense rotating over on Zeller. And Teddy Valentine over the call. Zeller will go to the free throw line. You know, our chat forward, when you rank the top players for the NBA draft, his leaders, he has Noel number one, he has Ben McLemore number two, Shabazz Muhammad number three, Alex Len number four, Anthony Bennett five, Otto Porter six, Cody Zeller seven. There are a lot of guys, and I respect the heck out of Chad, but I see guys on the bottom like Oladipo and Ed. I think they're going to be moving up that ladder. Watford Farrell to the bench. Oladipo hauls back into the game for Indiana. McGarry back into the game for Michigan. One of two for Zeller. What a family. What a basketball family. All three will make a living. Playing the game, but they're all great, great students. Not good students. They were all absolutely sensational students. Luke, Tyler, now Cody. Hardaway rolls off the rim. Indiana ball. He had to lay that on the glass. The Wizard of the Westwood used to always teach that. John Wooden. Hollowell getting some big minutes off the bench for Indiana here in the first half. Robinson on him. I don't think Robinson scored yet, has he? Has not. Has taken two shots scoreless in the game. Good step out. What a tremendous job on McGowan to pop that ball loose. Hardaway, the kick to Burke. Burke gets free, misses the three. Robinson with a good rebound in traffic, but then he loses it out of bounds. They did a great job with a ball screen to free Burke for that shot. It just didn't go down, but he had a tremendous look. Big difference in the game. Indiana's 5 for 9 from 3 point range. Michigan is 1 for 9 from 3 point range. Well, how many times we say the 3 point line could change the whole complexion of the game? Just look at those numbers right there. Mm -hmm. That's 12 extra points. What's keeping Michigan somewhat close is Indiana's turned it over 10 times, and Michigan has 10 points off those turnovers. Some of really work of mind to get the ball inside of the guy trying to beat him in the spot. They're going at it in the post. Ten to shoot. Less than two minutes here in the first half. Zeller wants the ball inside, but missed it. Sheehy with a 17-footer off the front of the iron, and here's Burke. Three on two. Burke coast to coast draws the foul. You know, he was rated 85th on the high school level when he came out of Columbus, Ohio. I saw the rankings, Paul B. and Cordy. He does a great job. He was 85. Played at the same high school with Mr. Sullinger. Let's check in again with Shannon Spick. Well, Dan, I spoke with Trey Burke yesterday just about this season. He told me that the game has really slowed down for him. That's how he's able to read all of the plays and react so quickly. He said actually playing Indiana last year was the game that showed him that. He went back, he watched all the highlights. It showed that he was playing very fast, and he realized how important it was for him, as I said at the start of the game, to play poise. But it was against Indiana that kind of gave him that perspective for this season. And Dickie's just a sophomore, but because he's been a starter from day one, it almost feels like he's a senior. He's got so much experience and so much poise. You know, I'm going to show later my Super 7 players mid-season, 1-7, where I rank as the best of the best. And he, I can tell you, is number one. Good defense on Hulls. For what he's achieved or what he's done so far this year. Zeller.
And it'll be Michigan ball. Zeller had a great opportunity for that little jump hook inside. Here comes your Super 7, my friend. Yeah, here's my Super 7. We took about seven guys, one to seven. That's the guys that would rate them in that way. Right there. How do you like that list? That's Come a pretty on, good list. Critique me. Critique <laughs> me. I mean, those seven guys are pretty good. I'm not sure which two you're bringing off the bench if you're coaching those seven. That's pretty good. <laughs> but that's how I would rank them if I would make them my choice now for the National Player of the Year. So you would, you would give it to Trey Burke and Doug McDermott second as of today. As of today. Stauskas misses Sub again. Subject to change. Yep. Stauskas has got to make some of those threes. McGarry having a big time first half. Finds Burke. Back to McGarry for the layup. What a sequence there for the big freshman. That was a nice look by Burke. He says, you know what, big fella? You created the turnover. I'm going to get you the ball for a deuce. Zeller to Watford. Zeller! That's big time. That's big time. Mom and Dad love it. He said, I told him to jump right down. I told him to have that kind of timing. What an environment, man. Super Bowl is great, but it's going to have to top this. Are you serious? This is electric, baby, electric. Hold me my seat. I can't believe the enthusiasm, the energy, the excitement. Holding for the last shot. Burke, a deep three. Got it! What a big time play. <laughs> a step back three. I'll give you a little Uncle Bo going to the locker room. What a way to close the first half for Trey Burke. Did they need that? After all that went right for Indiana at times in the first half, Michigan is only down by four. Here's Shannon. Well, Coach, you told me before the game you knew Indiana had a lot of weapons. What has been the primary weapon so far tonight? That, that early, you know, the early weapon was us. We came out and played way too hyped up. We didn't play with poison those first few minutes. Once we got our poise, we were fine. But uh, we, we had such bad offense at the beginning of the game, it created Created great offense for Indiana. What do you say to your guys? 20 more minutes to maintain that poise. I'm so proud of them because they, they, they're a smart group of young men. They really understood that you, you have to you have to play at a certain tempo on the road, right, to get established what you're trying to do. And after we established that, we were all right. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you. Cody Zeller leading Indiana with 11 points, including his follow slam in the last minute of the first half. But Trey Burke leading all scores. He had 14, including the three in the closing seconds. A four-point game. The UPS Halftime Report is next. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by UPS. Let UPS put the power of logistics to work for you. And Wendy's. Now that's better. Welcome back to Saturday Primetime, presented by Direct TV. We came to smash, smash. We came to smash. We came to smash, Big time game here at Bloomington. Number one in Michigan, number three Indiana. The Hoosiers by four going into the second half. What's the key? Well, I think number one, they got to come out and establish some tempo here early. I think it's pertinent for Michigan to get a good start, not like the start of the game. And think about this. This game, to me, is bigger to Indiana for this reason. You can't afford, if your goal and dream is to win the Big Ten title, this would be their second slip if they allow Michigan to come back and win this game on their home floor because they lost to Wisconsin. Look at how hot Indiana was. Yeah, Look at how cold they were to close the half as Trey Burke with a big three run at the end of the half made it a four-point game. We are underway here in the second half. Zeller had a big first half for Indiana with 11 points, six rebounds, and two blocks. Watford, good patience, can't finish, and Horford down with a rebound. Nice crossover and the finish for Tim Hardaway Jr. Well, great job of getting out of transition at three on two. They know how to finish. They run good angles off the transition game. That's their patented game. And Indiana's done a great job keeping them under control from getting into transition. Got to go to Zeller right there when he's on his back. 
Fade away. Good. He really looks impressive tonight. He has shown his versatility. He has such a complete skill set. Yogi Ferrell really taking the challenge, playing the best point guard in the nation. Trey Burke. Horford thinking about the backdoor feed, now hands off to Burke. I think the guy that's going to step up for Michigan, he's too talented to be 0 for 2, is Robinson. Robinson's had a phenomenal year. Needs Stauskas to make shots as well, one for eight in the first half. It'll be Burke for three. He certainly has lived up to his billing coming on this floor. He's played with poise. He's the three P man. Poise, little patience, and points. Burke leading all scores with 17. Farrell to a wide open Zeller. Well, we'll see the best little guy in the league. And we'll see the best big guy in the league. And both are not disappointing. Chad Ford, I think he's going to go up in your rankings. called for the foul as we send it over to Shannon. Well, Dan, one of the most important factors in Indiana's game plan is deflections. Tom Crean, he keeps track, track of deflections both in the game, during practice with a billboard here at the arena. As I talked to him as he walked out of the locker room, he made no bones about it. The biggest difference in this game, it wasn't deflections, it was turnovers in the 12 points. Well, let me tell you this, Shannon, deflections means that you're playing aggressive basketball. That was instituted by a guy who worked with us by the name of Ubi Brand years ago charting that. And Hull is called for another foul. And was it a two-point attempt or a three-point attempt? It'll be three free throws coming for Stauskas as Halls picks up two quick fouls here early in the second. You know, Michigan played a lot better early in this half than he did to start the game. There's the contact on Stauskas. Yubi Brown was ahead of so many in creating so many different parts of the game. He was a brilliant guy. He's still very brilliant, doing a great job for us in the NBA. You know, one thing you hate to see against a guy who's as good a shooter as Stauskas, and he's been struggling tonight. Put him on the line. You, you, you put him on the line, you let him feel the ball go through the net. You never know what's going to happen now here in the sixth. In your voice. A Canadian. <laughs> and you got some of your buddies up here, yeah. Mr. Batista from Toronto. I have Nick Bolletieri in the house, baby. <laughs> a little tennis guru. Dickie V, we are tied at wow. 40 in this heavyweight matchup. Oh, nice pass. <laughs> and Watford fouled by Hardaway. Great ball movement again. Watford had to go in a little stronger on that and jam that quickly. He was a little hesitant and they put him on the free throw line. There's a reason that Michigan is ranked number one right now in their 21. They weren't going to go away. They have too much going for them. They have great backcourt play. I believe that's the best backcourt in America. I've said it for the last four or five weeks. They got a terrific coach who understands the flow of the game and how to get the most out of his people. They have size. They have versatility. They got a package. They can win six in a row and be national champs. And so can Indiana. Watford knocks him down. He is a terrific shooter. 48% from beyond the arc, 82% from the line. Hoosiers by two. I met his brother here. His brother's a player as well, young brother. He's going to be a big kid too, isn't he? Yes, sir. Yep. Also, Theo Pinson in the house, a terrific recruit. One of the top juniors in America. Burke off the side of the backboard, but it's Michigan ball. He says, my fault, my bad. Trace is my bad. They played twice last season, they split them. They'll play again in Ann Arbor on the last weekend of the regular season. Good hands by Hulls. They've done a great job keeping Hulls away from shooting threes. Oh, the depot and one. He is so acrobatic around the baseline. You're going to see the great play defensively by Halls. He's battling. He has the tremendous steal. Local high school hero here in Bloomington. Has the good ball fake for you young kids out there. Utilize that ball fake. 
Robinson is first. Oladipo to the free throw line. You know, the magic of the Bob Light era is back here. There is no doubt. And it's going to get better and better and better because recruiting is getting better and better. I said to Tom, how can you not go to the Super Bowl right after the game? He said, are you serious? I got some good recruits here. I don't worry about Super Bowl. I'll worry about that tomorrow. <laughs> Got a good spacing right here. Robinson's got to walk the ball. He's got to move a little bit more. Burke using the screen. The three in and out. And it's Indiana ball. Burke's got to penetrate more. He's got to take it off the bench. Got to slow down Oladipo. Everybody getting a touch. Four guys on that team could shoot better than 40% from the trifecta. If you don't think that creates problems for coaches and preparing for them. And the fifth guy is this guy who's pretty good. Zeller off to Watford. And a foul on Hardaway. Size advantage right there. Watford on Hardaway. Third foul Tim Hardaway Jr. and Watford back to the free throw line. You talked about it earlier. We've done a lot of Indiana games. Watford sometimes, as great a shooter as he is, spends a lot of time outside the arc taking long jumpers. When he mixes it up inside and outside, he's as good as it gets. Absolutely. He has a tendency to be a little inconsistent, and he becomes passive. He stands. I see that right now out of Robinson. You expect that from the young kids. The freshman, he's been standing. You're not going to get the ball unless you're in motion. you got to run guys off screens. you got to move it off the ball. Hardaway out with three fouls. Stauskas back in. Hey, the other night, watching Noel with four fouls, that was the greatest I've witnessed in 30 years at ESPN for a guy playing with four fouls, blocking six shots yep. in that span, and never backed away. The Hoosiers have scored the last six points after Michigan rallied to tie it. Trey Burke trying to get a play call down. A little confusion right now offensively for the Wolverines. Hunch really takes pride on defense. He made a lot of quickness. Shot clock at seven. He better be aware of that. He's becoming too jump shot oriented, Burke. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Yes, sir. If he squares up, you tell him. I heard you, Danny. Yes. I heard you. I heard the little uh-oh. You're copying me, man. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh-oh. Uh -oh. They love it here. They a lot of uh-ohs. They love it in Hoosier hysteria. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by State Farm. For auto, home, life, and banking, get to a better state. And Chevrolet and their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. Sunday, ESPN has the ultimate countdown to Super Bowl 47. <laughs> now this is a test drive. Whoa, you really feel all 335 foot-pounds of torque. It's Chevy Truck Month. Silverado was also recognized for the lowest cost of ownership. Hey, what are you going to do with it? End table. Oh. It's Chevy Truck Month. Now get 0% financing for 60 months plus trade up to get $17.50 total allowance on a Silverado All-Star Edition or trade up and choose customer cash plus option package discount for a total value of $72.50. Want to know what I did in the last five hours? I played a round of golf. And then I read a book while teaching myself how to play guitar. Ran 10 miles while knitting myself a sweater. Jumped out of a plane. Finally, I became a ping pong master while recording. My debut album. How you ask? With five hour energy. I get hours of energy now, no crash later. Wait to see the next five hours. How could switchgrass in Argentina change engineering in Dubai, aluminum production in South Africa, and the aerospace industry in the US? At T. Rowe Price, we understand the connections of a complex global economy. 
It's just one reason over 75% of our mutual funds beat their 10-year LIBOR average. T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. Request a prospectus or summary prospectus with investment information, risks, fees, and expenses to read and consider carefully before investing. In the world of edible arrangements, we help turn guys into heroes when they give our new Valentine's Day bouquet. Juicy pineapple hearts and luscious strawberries dipped in gourmet chocolate. Gifts start at just $29. It's sure to make you a Valentine's Day hero. For the sweetest Valentine's Day gift ever, order today. Just visit, call, or go to ediblearrangements.com. Make life a little sweeter with Edible Arrangements. Hey, Jeff, what's the deal? Welcome back to Assembly Hall. If you think the action on the court with the players is exciting, you should see the coaches here on the bench. Coach Tom Crean, who's always very animated, has been jumping up and down, demanding that the fans include themselves in this game, get hyped up. Coach Beeline told his players during the halftime that they took the first punch. Now it's their turn to punch. I saw him moments ago on the sideline shaking his fist. These guys are pumped up. Tell you, Shannon, Tom Green, you talk about enthusiasm and energy and passion. He brings that to the table, my friend. What a family when you talk about. I mean, they possibly could have the national championship as Joni. Brothers tomorrow should be a nervous wreck. John and Jim going at it. But think about this. If he wins the national title, that family could have the national title of basketball. <laughs> and the super we know they got the super. Yeah, one way or the other. And that was a call timeout by Michigan, so the under-16 media timeout is coming on the next whistle. It's a 9-0 run right now for Indiana after Michigan tied it. Burke short on the three. I think he's shooting too many threes, Dan. I really do. I think he's got to try to beat people off the dribble, get in the lane, dish the rock. Wolverine scuffling a little bit right now. Indiana leads by nine. The journey to the tourney continues with one of the nation's most heated rivalries. Floor General Aaron Kraft leads Ohio State into battle against Trey Burke and the top-ranked Wolverines. Ohio State, Michigan, Tuesday at 9 on ESPN. Never share again. Taco Bell's new loaded grillers. Appetizer taste of spicy wings, tasty skins, and beefy nachos. Wrapped up just for you. Listen to that. We are being serenaded by the Chevy Silverado, the most dependable, longest-lasting, full-size pickups on the road, with the lowest cost of ownership. Huh. Mm, the sound of Chevy Truck Month. It's Chevy Truck Month. Now get 0% financing for 60 months, plus trade up to get $17.50 total allowance on a Silverado All-Star Edition, or trade up and choose customer cash plus option package discount for a total value of $72.50. The Capital One Cup congratulates the best of the best in college sports. Congratulations to all the NCAA Division I full national champions. These student athletes have laid it all on the line to bring honor and glory to their schools by winning valuable points towards the Capital One Cup. Follow your school and check the standings at CapitalOneCup.com to see who will win the Capital One Cup and be the best in college sports. Number three, Indiana, leading number one, Michigan, 49 to 40, 14, 49 to go in the second half. This is the second time ever that the two programs have met when each has been ranked in the top five 20 years ago. Michigan, under Steve Fisher, was number four. Indiana, under Bob Knight, was number one. The Wolverines jumped out to a 27 to 14 lead, but the Hoosiers got it down to two at the half and then went on a decisive 28 to eight run. Big games for Calvert Cheney and Allen Henderson as Indiana 
Atlanta won 93 to 92 and won the Big Ten Championship in 1993. They have had several matchups where both have been ranked in the top 10. They have never had one like they're having tonight when each has been ranked in the top three. I look at those banners, I think of one thing this building should be, and I've said it time and time again, the Robert Montgomery Knight Arena. Zeller being bothered by Levert, trying to dribble out of trouble and draws the foul. That 93 team, by the way, that won the conference the last time they won the Big Ten. They had an injury to Allen Henderson, they might have won. They lost to the Elite Eight to Kansas. They might have won the national title. He went out, he was such a vital part of their team. And it was Michigan, including uh, our guy Jalen Rose, who went on to the national championship game that year in 93 before losing to North Carolina. Will Sheehy with the baseline jumper. 11-0 run Hoosiers. He's one of the premier guys off the bench. Great six man. You know, you think about teams that can be up there for that national title. Don't forget Louisville, you're going there tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Rick Pitino's still had that little slide, but those were three heartbreakers they lost. Kansas lost today at home to Oklahoma State. Syracuse lost at Pittsburgh as McGarry gathers and finishes. Nice two-man play right there. I've said it once and I'll say it again. Rick Pitino belongs in the Hall of Fame. No doubt. Please tell him that tomorrow. I will. I will. He's going to get there. You know that. Hulls again. And McGarry with another rebound. He has given Michigan some very important minutes at the center spot. I tell you what, they've done a great job in the end of keeping it put a hand on Burke. Not allowing Burke. He likes to get in the three secondary or penetration and create opportunities. ESPN College Basketball is available live anytime, anywhere on your computer, tablet, or smartphone at watchespn.com and with the Watch ESPN app. Dan Schulman, Dick Vitale, Shannon Spake, the game day gang all here at Assembly Hall in Bloomington for this highly anticipated and extremely important game, both within the Big Ten and nationally between Michigan and Indiana. McGarry from 17 feet, too strong. Wide open, a little penetration by Boat. Gotta stop the ball, look at throw, running that ball up the court. Turns it over. Convert off the turnover. Levert, yes. They do a great job. If they create the turnover, they have speed, athleticism to get right up for a layup. Hey, I don't want to hear about regular season, doesn't matter. Come and see where you and I are yeah. and watch the unbelievable intensity and emotion the way these kids are playing and the coaches coaching. So all you guys out there screaming, it doesn't matter. Forget about it. That's absolutely ludicrous. Farrell, nice bounce pass. Watford with a finish. Watch him go to the mouth a little bit more rather than drifting, shooting perimeter shots. Great two-man play. Both trying to pick up contact and a foul. And again, a similar situation that we had in the first half. Four freshmen are in the game right now for Michigan, along with the sophomore point guard, Trey Burke. They are, I believe, the youngest team when you talk about top 20 teams yes. in the country. Yep. Stauskas. Great move. That kid is not just a stationary jump shooter. They are producing some quality players from your country, my friend. Out of Mississauga, Ontario. We might just have a little Canadian content for you coming up in a minute or two as Farrell draws the foul before the shot. And where do you see Mr. Wiggins? I know. <laughs> where do you see Mr. Wiggins? We'll see him somewhere oh, next year. Oh, wow. He is special. I watched him in high school in Florida. He was unbelievable as athleticism. Nick Stowski is can't skate. Never played hockey. A basketball junkie from as far back as he can remember. They play hockey in Canada? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Only 12 months a year. Stowski is to the bench. Uh, Horford is back into the game as McGarry sits down. You can be a bragging father. You're some better quite a hockey player. <laughs> Abel. Sheehy, and Hulls is grabbed by Burke. They do a great job reversing that basketball. Swing it side to side, get good ball movement. Third on Burke. Keep an eye on that. You know, he can't play around putting guys on a bench. You're down seven. Yep. He's going to take Burke out. I don't know how long you can go without him. And they just sent Spike Albrecht to the table to check in. Sheehy, no. Burke with a rebound. Hardaway with a quick trigger on the three. He's playing with three. Lined up, ran right to the three-point line. Came up big. 
Holmes, the floater, offensive foul. He was up in the air, there's no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Number, sorry, Dick, number three on Holmes. Michigan was down 11. All of a sudden, they're back within four with a long ways to go. Stauska's not hitting from outside. Goes inside with a two-handed slam. And then Michigan gets a little bit closer. Hardaway knocks down another big shot. For an incredible world, you need an improbable vehicle. So we engineered the new Mazda CX-9 to be both spacious and agile. We designed it to be utilitarian, yet stylish. And we made the CX-9 sophisticated, but kept it within reach. The improbable is now possible. Introducing the Mazda CX-9. Reimagined for 2013. We build Mazdas. What do you drive? The ESPNU National Signing Day Special. The 2013 college football season starts now. Find out where the top recruits of the nation will be making plays. We kick it off with number one ranked Robert Kemdichi's live announcement. And our experts have you covered all day, coast to coast. Somebody's going to get a phenomenal athlete this year. The ESPNU National Signing Day Special. Coverage begins Wednesday at 7.30 a.m. Eastern on ESPNU. Taronis. Expressway is starting 2013 by making monster mega markdowns on our entire inventory of new vehicles. The remaining new 2012s have got to go. And the 13s have got to roll. New 2012 Ram Quad Cab Express with Hemi as low as $21,990. That's the lowest price you'll find on a new Ram truck. And Expressway understands family values. Here's a new 2013 Dodge Grand Caravan with DVD for only $18,990. Monster Mega Markdowns on the largest inventory in the Tri-State. Expressway Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Evansville. TV. Now this game is catching the attention of so many people around the country, including a couple of NBAers. Chris Paul watching this game between Michigan and Indiana, and Jared Sullinger, former Big Ten guy, Ohio State, saying Oladipo is a beast, by far one of my favorite players to watch in college basketball. A lot of people share that opinion. I tell you one thing, I know one, and Sullinger's not rooting for Oladipo. He is rooting for Trey Burke, his former high school teammate. His daddy was the coach of that team in high school. Chris Paul and Jared Sullinger are what you want as athletes. They are really, truly, you'll never want Worry about those guys off the court. Burke on the bench, Albrecht in the game. He can get away with it now because he's scoring. But when was there at seven, if they made that three and got up ten, you're going to bring him on the floor. Burke has played 27 out of 29 minutes in this game. Abel applying some pressure on Albrecht. Let's see how the freshman handles it. They just want to initiate the offense. Robinson is scoreless in this game. He's 0 for 2. He's got to learn to move without the ball a little bit more. Shot clock running down. Michigan scrambling. Levert forces it up. Horford down with a rebound and back up with a reverse. That's a big time rebound. And that kid not suffered a broken foot, a kneecap fracture. He would be a heck of a player. You gotta remember what he has battled. He's battled so many injuries. Big brother Al, of course, terrific NBA player. Dad Tito played in the league as well. His brother is something else, man. And what about the floor of the game? You took them all great teams. They are just decimated yep. in competition. Look at Horford on the offensive glass. Now he's gonna spin away and with the reverse layup. The Gators have been unreal. Horford just picked up his second foul. They are annihilating teams yeah. in the SEC right now. And as Seller gets ready to check back in. My friend, my friend, yes, sir. a little pressure right now. If Michigan loses today, who's your number one? 
<laughs> between Indiana and Florida. Well, yeah. Florida, Indiana, who would be another one? one of those two. I mean, Indiana's three right now, so you would think they would move up to one. Number two, Kansas, by the way, lost at home today to Oklahoma State, 85 to 80, ending a long home court winning streak for the Jayhawks. I would bump Indiana up to number one if they win this, beating a team like Michigan. I think so, yeah. Even though they're so. home, this is a quality team they would be beating. But Florida's right there. I'm telling you, you talk about top five. This Billy Donovan's club has the full package. Here are the rankings. The rankings will change on Monday. And again, Kansas lost, Syracuse lost today. And Florida continuing to roll. Burke is back in. I don't know if there's any Donnie had up in the back on the yep. floor. Albrecht remains in the game, so they're both in the game together right now. Both these teams are so unselfish, they're so team-oriented. Robinson rejected by Holloway. He's having a tough, tough evening, Mr. Robinson. Sheehy for three. He was already going the other way. He put that baby in his down. He brings so much energy, as you said earlier. He's a tough guy defensively as well. One of the favorites of Terry Hutchins. Loves him, the fine writer yeah. who covers it. Hey, I want to say, wish all the help in the world. The great guy, Bob Kravitz, who just had a heart attack. The columnist here does a terrific job in Indianapolis. Bob, we're all thinking about you and wish you the best. Horford traveled. He definitely looked at his cooking for I tell you one thing, the three guys blowing the whistle, they are doing one heck yep. of a job here. Mike Sands here, Ted Valentine, and Mike Eads getting up and down the court with these two offensive teams. You're looking at one, two in the conference in almost every yep. offensive category. And one, two in the country in offensive efficiency. That is points per possession. Sheehy will try it from the other side. Hollowell, what a great job carving out some space. He's done a terrific job off the bench. He has really been active on the glass, Hollowell. Good positive minutes. You need that from your back. And you need to get off the adrenaline of this crowd. Oh, I love this place, man. I love it. Big shot for Burke again. Big shot for big time players. 19 for Trey Burke and an Indiana turnover. Carroll right there did a great job running the ball up the court, but should have dropped the little bounce pass. Watch this step out. Watch this step out. There's no doubt that he will be a solid NBA player. And again, at various times tonight, Burke has had Farrell on him, Oladipo on him, and Sheehy on him. Sheehy getting a lot of time on Trey Burke tonight. Well, she has great size. He's tough. He's got that tenacity. Try to stay in front of him. Make him shoot jump shots. Even though he's a good jump shot shooter, but you don't want him to do this, get penetrated. Too strong. McGarry back into the game with a rebound. Blocked from behind by Holloway. He's a horse, the scout. He's a horse. And good help by Sheehy to knock it out of bounds. This is to make my whole wide body team. <laughs> Coach loves him. Yep. Great attitude. They practice hard. Sheehy to the bench. Jordan Hull's back into the game for IU. I remember the last time number one came here 14 months ago. Mm -hmm. Team by the name of Kentucky. But if Indiana wins tonight, I don't want to hear anybody screaming upset. They're a favorite, man. They're a favorite. That was Christian Watford's big shot to beat Kentucky last year. Well, as my buddy Brent Musburger would say, Michigan's a four and a half point dog. <laughs> Robinson elevates, misses the jumper, comes down with a rebound, and commits the foul, which actually prevented Oladipo from going in for a dunk. Which would have given the house yep. an unbelievable roar, momentum, a good moment would have been unbelievable. That was what you call a good foul. And the foul going on Hollowell. Of Indiana. Oh, he gave it to Yeah, it went, on, went, to, went against IU. And it'll be Michigan ball. 8-10 to go. The Hoosiers leading by four. Michigan very early in this game had a one-point lead. Indiana has led by as many as 15. 
You know, you look at the big jam, you say the best conference out there. They have struggled at tournament time to win titles, but there's a reason for that. They've gotten to the Final Fours, but there's been some heavyweight teams like Duke and Carolina, Florida. Burke a miss. Farrell a long bounce pass. Holes the lob. Oh, and all the depot almost made what would have been as incredible a finish as you will ever see. That would have been a Jordan finish. Oh, Absolutely. My. Sit the landing sensation. The pass was thrown behind him. The pass was thrown behind him. And he still almost had the athleticism to convert it. See, the pass is thrown behind him. There he is reaching up. I mean, does that look like Michael? Ooh. Does that look like Michael? ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Direct TV. Don't just watch TV, Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV and in part by Wendy's. Now that's better. And Mazda. Introducing the seven passenger Mazda CX 9, reimagined for 2013. DVR's full again. Oh, you're kidding. Kibble's more irritating than. <laughs> I know. Cable makes me angrier than... We need to upgrade to DirecTV and get the new Genie. She gives you three times more storage than Cable. You're right. DirecTV is more amazing than... Get three times more HD recording capacity with a new DirecTV Genie. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. Saving a few bucks. Same here. Wendy's. Saving doesn't mean settling. Going in. <laughs> Introducing Wendy's new right price, right size menu. Loaded with big tastes you can't get anywhere else. Starting at 99 cents. Now that's better. For an incredible world, you need an improbable vehicle. So we engineered the new Mazda CX-9 to be both spacious and agile. We designed it to be utilitarian, yet stylish. And we made the CX-9 sophisticated kept it within reach. The improbable is now possible. Introducing the Mazda CX-9. Reimagined for 2013. We build Mazdas. What do you drive? It's Valentine's Day. You gotta bring home chocolates on Valentine's Day. You have to give her chocolates. No chocolate, big trouble. It's Valentine's Day. You've got to give him chocolate. Don't give her just any chocolates. Give her Russell Stover chocolates with the famous Russell Stover bow. Chris Cotter with the Sports Center right now. We'll update the Spurs. Tim Duncan sprained both his left knee and right ankle during the first half of tonight's game against the Wizards. Duncan had to be helped off the court. Right now, the severity of the sprains are unknown. For more details, tune in to Sports Center or log on to ESPN.com. Dan. Hi, right, Chris. Thank you. Back here in Bloomington, along with Dick Vitale, Shannon Spink. I'm Dan Schulman. Saturday primetime here on ESPN. And what a, an intense, loud, hectic affair it has been tonight. Indiana leading for all but a few seconds of this game. But Michigan round. Let's go to Shannon. Well, guys, just listened in on the Michigan bench. Basically, they told their players, this is how it goes. Four straight stops, and we can have the lead. I heard Coach uh, tell the team, they're going for the highlights. Let us go for the win. I like that. I like that. You know, I was talking earlier about the Big Ten. Last time they won the championship was 2000. Tom Izzo's club, Michigan State. Prior to that was 89. That was the team that Steve Fisher took to the title. So when you think about it in 23 years, that's reminding to the Final Four. Tim Hardaway Jr. It seems every time they need a big bucket, he's the guy who delivers. He's got 13, Burke's got 19, and it's a two-point game. You know, he's really played well tonight. He's played under control. When I talk about Hardaway, last year twice against Indiana, really struggled. He was 2 for 15, shooting threes, and 11 for 33. All the depot. Seller. He's been playing so lately. Doesn't get enough touches. I believe that big fella, you got to go through him a little more. Zeller now with 17 and 8 rebounds. You know, Michigan has not been ahead since the first minute of this game. Their only lead was 3-2. to two. Try to take Hardaway here size-wise. Rebound to Watford. Took a tough shot right yeah. there. Ooh, collision as Zeller goes down. He and McGarry, boy. McGarry's got somebody. He's a wide body. Make my own wide body team. 
Farrell splits the defense. Again, great ball movement. Everybody getting a touch. Michigan recovers, though, when the shot clock's now at five. Yeah, terrific job on Michigan recovery. Farrell on a hold there. It's going to be on Oladipo, I believe, and it is. Yeah, he grabbed the Mike Sands here with the call. Didn't waste any time. Reached in, made the grab. Just the first on Oladipo. Next scoring at the numbers they scored during the year because they're getting after it defensively. They are really getting after it. You don't see many just wide open shots. Sixth team foul on Indiana. The Hoosiers are already in the bonus, as you can see. Four point lead, 6.16 to go. Got the two, two three point shooters playing each other, Halls and yep. Staskis. They show him trying to get a screen for Staskis. Get him a look at that three. And Oladipo's back on Burke. He's a 50% shooter from the trifecta. Can't get any open looks. Farrell on Hardaway right now. So Hardaway goes right at him, but can't make the shot. Out of bounds to the Hoosiers. Well, you know, Farrell did a great job defensively, not allowing him to beat him. Stayed in front of him, made him shoot the ball yeah. over the top of him, and make him, made him take really a bad shot. Under six to go. Oladipo. Zeller again. Nobody puts a body. The offensive rebound and the missed shot has been a vital part of the offense of Indiana. You must block out, especially a guy like Zeller. The guy who should be the first to get a body on him and not release from him. Burke the miss, Watford the rebound. This is a big possession for Indiana. Good recovery, Robinson knocks it out of bounds. Robinson's going to have a heck of a career at Michigan. He's just going for a little struggle. This seller with the offensive rebound. Twice McGarry's come to help on the Oladipo drive, and twice Zeller's been all alone for the offensive rebound. But there's no reason for help in that sequence if you watch. None whatsoever. His first responsibility should get his body right between Zeller and the basket. Timeout, Michigan. Got a doubleheader for you here on ESPN Super Tuesday, beginning at 7 Eastern, as the Gators take on Arkansas, and then at 9 Eastern, a Big Ten battle, Ohio State, and you'll see the Wolverines again, this time in Ann Arbor. Tuesday on ESPN and also live on Watch ESPN. What do you like about the Gators? What have you seen this year well, that impresses you? Great balance. I'll tell you, the perimeter players are super. You look at Boyton, you look at Rosario, Wubikin is a tremendous defensive player. Size inside, Patrick Young, Murphy's having a great year. Bench play. They've had a lot of injuries. Billy Donovan knows how to coach. Learned so much under Rick Pitino. I'm telling you this, that Florida Gator team is absolutely legitimate. In fact, our buddy Digger says they're going to win it all. They're going to win it all. I mean, Billy Donovan, you think he's putting together a resume for Hall of Fame? Give me a key for the last five minutes here. Well, I tell you, the key right now is I think you got to get some shots for stopping. Robinson's been very passive on the offensive side. Well, the depot spinning and a block from behind by McGarry. He gets around the baseline. He's as good as there is on that baseline with his acrobatic jumping ability. He's like Walenda, man. <laughs> I tell you, that's even easier for Michigan either. Ohio State and then at Wisconsin. That's like going to see Dr. Dentist. McGarry oh. forces another turnover. Burke spinning. Banks at home, it's a block, counted, and a foul. Could be an old-fashioned free. Oh, here's Burke. He's going to spin, whirl, take it up, protect the body. Does a great job controlling his body. He'll step back a little bit here. There he is right there, floating, laying up on the glass. And Farrell clearly sliding to his left as Burke banks it in. Third on Farrell. I love seeing these kids that come in and not the Dallas All-American. I mean, he wasn't a Wendy's All-American. He wasn't anybody's All-American. Somebody told me he was thinking it's time to go to Penn State. And last minute went to Michigan. Tell you what, he's going to be a lot of people's All-American this year, though. Absolutely. And maybe, maybe Unanimous. the player of the year. Unanimous. Yep. 22 okay. tonight for Bird. Oh, 
Jones from the corner. That three is lethal. That three is lethal. He is just a terrific three-point shooter. And the numbers back that statement up. Try to set a screen for him. Oh. And all the depot called for the foul. Could have been called on both. Could have been called on both. Tell me, Mr. Zebra. I'm going to make you Mr. Zebra. Watch this right here. What do you think? Think he pushed off yeah, the left arm? The left arm. Yeah. Left arm. Well, you knew Burke was worried about it with how quickly he turned around to look at the official to see which way it was going. And you know what? Mr. Beeline was worried about it, too. <laughs> and his beautiful wife here tonight, Kathleen. They go through hell. My heart goes out for all the beautiful wives out there that support their husbands. Big miss on the front end of the one and one. How's it big when you got six or turnover? Got to get a little movement. This backcourt is terrific. Hardaway using the screen. Elevates. McGarry gets it to go. Offensive rebound position by McGarry. There's a little tip. Hardaway with that little jump shot. McGarry's got 10 points and 6 rebounds. See, that gets some touches inside to Zola. Oladipo wrapped up. And a foul before the shot. There's no continuation. Guy next to me screaming, continuation. This is not the NBA. The Capital One Cup congratulates the best of the best in college sports. Congratulations to all the NCAA Division I full national champions. These student athletes have laid it all on the line to bring honor and glory to their schools by winning valuable points towards the Capital One Cup. Follow your school and check the standings at CapitalOneCup.com to see who will win the Capital One Cup and be the best in college sports. For an incredible world, you need an improbable vehicle. So we engineered the new Mazda CX-9 to be both spacious and agile. We designed it to be utilitarian, yet stylish. And we made the CX-9 sophisticated, but kept it within reach. The improbable is now possible. Introducing the Mazda CX-9. Reimagined for 2013. We build Mazdas. What do you drive? Vacation is a precious thing. So this year, make the most of it. Fly like you've never been grounded. Scream like you've never been shushed. Let go like you have nothing to lose. And hold on to what matters most. It's your vacation. Don't just take it. Mean it. Universal Orlando. Vacation like you mean it. What's up? John Butchergrass, Jay Harris on Sports Center after the game. We'll go right back out to Bloomington for instant analysis and reaction. The Hall of Fame class in the regular season NFL awards were announced today, and the Niners and Ravens make last minute preparations. Sports Center after the game. Back into Bloomington, another look at the last play. I misinterpreted the signal from Mike Sanzier, the official. They counted this basket. I thought the foul was on the floor, and he would go to the line for one and one. I agree with you. I agree with wow. you. I'm surprised. Yeah. They counted the basket. They counted the basket, so got a chance for a three-point play. What a big call that is as we take a look at tonight's game track, brought to you by DirecTV. So it's a six-point game in spite of a big night for Trey Burke. Cody Zeller having a terrific night. And Indiana, which is led by as many as 15 and trailed only briefly early in the first half, they've got a chance to extend the lead to seven with 3.37 to go. See, I thought in the NBA that would count, but that was almost the guy next to me on the right. He's a little happy right now because obviously the referee felt that he got grabbed as he was going up for the shot. I thought the contact was prior to him releasing the ball. Oladipo at the line.
He makes big plays. He makes momentum plays. Yep. He makes plays that gets the crowd electric. He has gone from a player who was a great athlete but raw and still developing a couple of years ago into one of the premier players in all of college basketball. You know, Dan, I believe in all my years, probably the most improved go from where he was to becoming a lead wow. player. Yep. The lead is seven. Needless to say, every possession becomes big for Michigan. Yeah, really, Hawkins Staskis not giving him any looks for a three. Hardaway using the screen. Another big shot for Hardaway. He's been doing it all night. Every time they look on the ropes, his father, man, had one of the great crossovers you could ever see in basketball. And I think they're going to look at it right now to see if it was a two or a three. Got to make sure. Big screen by McGarry. It looks like a foot on the line right there. Looks like a two on the line. It is yeah, yeah, a two. two. Yeah, yeah. Good bit of officiating right there. Didn't hesitate. Went right over. Got to look at it. Got the call right. So the lead is five for Indiana with 3.12 to go. I used to drive Rick Pitino crazy when he's down in Kentucky, especially about guys not stepping back and shooting over that three. Know where you are in the court, but a lot of times the kid has no clue. The officials are still over at the monitor right now. The Michigan players have come back onto the court. The Indiana players are still huddling with Tom Cream. Mike Sainz here saying, come on guys, go over to your coach. Go over to your coach, we got a little, we're not sure. They're going back, they're not certain. They want to be certain. Is it on line? You've got two eyes, yeah, come looks, on. Looks like a two to me. Looks like the toe was touching. They're not certain. They signaled two, but then decided to go back and recheck it. And now Mike Eads is going to come over to the table and let us know the... Uh... Gotcha. Okay, the, Mike Eads telling us, great job, and we're eternally grateful when an official does this. It wasn't the two or three they were looking at the second time. McGarry on the screen hit Hulls pretty hard with that screen. They wanted to make sure there wasn't any kind of an elbow or anything like that, that it wasn't a flagrant foul. It was a basketball play, a clean screen by McGarry. Hulls on the bench, and we play on. Well, you look at the modern receivers above the neck area. Levert in the game. At crunch time for Michigan, trying to defend Oladipo. But he's an athlete. He voted as an athlete. Yeah. Got quickness. So we're trying to match quickness yeah. with quickness. Hardaway not in the game right now for Michigan. Watford inside over Robinson. That's a great move by Watford. Rather than drift to the perimeter, utilize his skill down the low post. Take advantage of his ability in the box. Terrific job of posting up. Robinson, good shot fake, 18-footer, not there. He's taking the Ziggy tonight, he has not scored. Had a good look, good shot fake. They're going to manage the clock, good free throw shooting team, Indiana. That creates a burden for the clubs playing up when you're down. Stays with Indiana, 16 to shoot, 2-0-2 in regulation. The lead is seven. Hulls back in for the Hoosiers. Hardaway back in for the Wolverines. Especially if they put the ball in Hulls' hand down the stretch and you foul him, he's like almost automatic. Even though this year he's not been as automatic as last year. He only missed all of last year's seven free throws. This year he's got to a little streak where he's struggling. Oladipo, heavy traffic. Zeller bails him out. Still loose. Look at the hustle by Zeller. Oh, when you get an old American that hustles, it becomes contagious. Oh, what a great play by Zeller. That is something a coach has to love. And I love it down in the Super Bowl to have their people hustling like this. I mean, that's a Raymond Lewis kind of play, man. Look at this big fella. They're going to get after it. There's the ball. Yeah, look at the big fella, number four. I mean, he's going after that like it's his last beer. 
And as his dad's, I love that. I love that, Cody. His mom said, that's my boy. That's my boy. What a great job of hustle. Yogi Ferrell at the line. 78% on the season. High school feed on in the state of Indiana. He's going to be a good one here. And he's one of those kids, looks like he's a four-year player. Does not change my opinion. If Michigan goes down, how good they are. You put them on a neutral court against anybody in America, and they got a great chance to win. They have all the points, and so does Indiana. Precious seconds ticking away. Burke for three. They're going to be celebrating that at Kilroy's. They're going to be jumping with joy down at Bloomington. Oh, oh Depot. Oh. And McGarry down with a rebound. Down to a minute 12. Burke fires a pass to Robinson, his first points of the night. That's a big time transition play. That's NBA style right there. Run, baby, run. Well, number one, Dick, has been a precarious place to be so far this college basketball season. We have seen number one lose time and time again, beginning with Indiana, that overtime game in Indianapolis against Butler, 88 to 86. That knocked them out of the number one spot, put Duke up there until NC State knocked them off in Raleigh on January the 12th. How long did that last? Oh, about a week till Louisville lost to Syracuse at home as the Orange came back into one of the dying seconds and then Duke went back up to number one before they were beaten soundly by Miami elevating Michigan to the top spot in the wow. rankings and if Michigan loses tonight it may be Indiana going back up to number one with Kansas losing earlier today. I think Florida's getting a lot of votes for number one as well and deservedly so. I think when you look right now but being number one as Trey Burke said we want to be number one at the end man when it really all counts. I mean right now you play for a lot of pride you want to win your league the games matter you talk about the seeding. A minute nine to go. Albrecht is into the game for Burke. Burke's got four fouls, so in case Albrecht has to foul, they'll get Burke back in there when they get the ball back. These big time programs usually have like three roads. They want to win the regular season, win the postseason tournament, and then win the championship. Halls will be going to the free throw line. Burke on his way back in. Two free throws the rest of the way for Indiana. Yeah, you look at a guy like Hulls on the line, or you did that in North Carolina State with Wood. I mean, it's really lethal at the end of the game with these guys going the line. Play high school ball right here in the city. Well, everybody with the appetite now for all the football fans to go into a frenzy tomorrow. Plus, you'll have a little frenzy down in Louisville. Yep. fans get after it. Marquette Louisville, Mark Louisville. Two Eastern on ESPN. Tom Crean, very excited to go to New Orleans. Although, for it to be a, a great weekend for him, needs this one here tonight, and he's a minute away. He's not going to New Orleans till really early tomorrow morning, as he's going to be entertaining some recruits tonight. All but over now. ESPN's journey to the tourney is a season-long spotlight on games that will impact the tournament. Tuesday game, you'll be out with Mike Tirico up in Ann Arbor. Number 11, Ohio State taking on Michigan. That's 9 Eastern on ESPN and also live on Watch ESPN. That's a little payback time, too. They lost the heartbreaker. They were down 29-8 to eight against Ohio State. Came back with 16 ticks on the clock. Trey Burke had a shot, a three, to give him the lead. Not the win, because certainly Ohio State would have got the ball. But they lost that game, and you better believe every game becomes big now when you talk about winning the Big Ten title. Burke with 22 points tonight, but Indiana 
has now made nine straight free throws, and they've got an 11-point lead in the final minute. That's the one making free throws. My friends, don't forget a guy by the name of Thomas. They're seven and two, and they'll get better and better and better. Michigan State Spartans, don't forget about them. And don't three goes down for Hardaway that Indiana will be at Michigan on the last weekend of the regular season. They also got a journey up to Michigan State. Well, let's talk about one of the key guys for Indiana tonight and all season long. Cody Zeller's been outstanding. He really set the challenge early in the game. He showed right away that he was going to be after and that he wanted the rock kick side. Showed his first and silly little jump shot. The ability to move without the ball. He gets this is the offensive rebound. He did it all. If I'm picking one guy, you said to me, start college season. I'm not saying the best player, but I'm saying if I had to pick one guy to start my program, like with anybody in college, I'm taking Zeller. I'm starting with a seven-footer because offensively and defensively, efficiency starts with the big guy in the middle. Well, you can build around. Yeah, yeah, we're watching really three of the best players in the country tonight in Zeller, Oladipo, and Burke. Absolutely. When you talk about all-American teams, my friend, it's been a pleasure again. Mm -hmm. I've enjoyed this. I feel like a little kid <laughs> here. I have all the red all over my shirt for the fans, their body paint, and I look at the crowd. I come home, I'm like, my wife says, where you been, man? Where you been? <laughs> and, uh, and tomorrow you got the Niners by a field goal, you said. Niners by a field goal. Yeah. Cabinet time. Jim Harbaugh celebrates. I feel that. I love John, too. I love his personality. Jim has missed the intensity. He was quite a shortstop pitcher in baseball. I read a big story on him. I read a story about Jim Harbaugh that said the coach said after the football season in high school, up at Palo Alto area, said, look, Jim, take a week off for basketball. Coach goes to the gym for basketball practice. And the day, who's the first guy there? Jim Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh. It tells you something, huh? Competitor. And another Michigan foul. You gotta win at home. It's just like John Beeline now gets Ohio State at home. You gotta have the Chrysler crowd going nuts, feed off that crowd, and get a win. You got to protect your home turf. I mean, basketball, we see it day in and day out. The wins that are coming in, teams winning at home. Just check them out. Sports Center coming up next here on ESPN. Post game reaction to this preview of the Super Bowl, of course. A look at all the action around a busy day in college hoops and a, a knee injury for Tim Duncan of San Antonio. He had to be helped off the court tonight. But when you talk about a player, he and David Robinson, two of my favorites, because like Trey Burke, they were not high school superstars. They went to college and proved their value and became terrific players. So the message to a lot of you kids, get out there and work and work like Oladipo does. The coaches, Calvin Cheney was raving to me about his work ethic. Stauskas. Man, can he shoot it? Seven-point game, Michigan out of timeouts. And just, they've got a foul again. Just a guy like Stoskis has to find a way to get free for shots. Now you talked about how rugged the schedules are for these two programs, how rugged they are for everybody in the Big Ten. Indiana's going on the road for a couple at Illinois, at Ohio State. They got another game at Michigan State and still have to go to Minnesota and Michigan before the end of the regular season. Well, you know, look at Illinois. They're in a desperate state right now. They gave a real battle at Michigan State before faltering. I would have liked to have heard the halftime speech of Tom Izzo because they were down 10. He came out. They scored 14 in a row. Wow. He probably got Magic Johnson on the phone. <laughs> Talk for the team. But I'm going to tell you this. Illinois is putting himself in a position, and you would have never believed it after winning the Maui, beating Butler, beating Gonzaga, as Burke would have been free. You would have never thought that they'd be in a position where they're going to be fighting for an NCAA berth. Michigan knocking down shots to give themselves a sliver of an opportunity, but Indiana keeps making free throws. They've made 13 consecutive free throws. Well, you've said it. The free throw line could be the difference. That was the top of our show. And the free throw line has been big here for the Hoosiers. 13 in a row at crunch time is major. 
14 in a row. Yeah. You're battling and battling back. You think this guy works that sideline? <laughs> He's a young version of Gary Williams. Pretty good game tonight for Yogi Ferrell. Burke launches about a 32-footer. Sheehy down with a rebound. Let and the, Michigan will concede. Let the party begin. Oh, Kilroy's still jumping with joy. Who's your hysteria? Oh, a little showtime. Mr. Oladipo, wave it off. Wave it off, but it looked good. It looked good. He's a mini version of a young Michael Jordan. I'm not saying he's Michael now. He's a mini version of his kind of skill set when he played in college. He was one of the stars tonight for Indiana. They had five players in double figures as they defeat Michigan. And very possibly Indiana will be the number one ranked team of the nation for the new rankings come out on Monday. Two outstanding teams who could go a long, long way in the NCAA tournament. For Dick Vitale and Shannon Smith, I'm Dan Shorman saying thanks for watching and so long from Bloomington.